The Arch Gaming Network is proud to bring you this board game review. Now here's your host, Sean Smith. Hello, and thank you for stopping by. You know, today I was reading a medical journal, and it had an article in there about this disease that is going around called Grazels that what? is infecting a lot of people. You know, I don't put a whole lot of stock in those kind of things. I think it's kind of just a scare. So, uh-oh. Okay, like I was saying, you, you can never be too careful. So, we're just going to wear this for, for now. Um, so, it's kind of a coincidence that today we're looking at the game Quarantine that was designed by Mark Clausen and published by Mercury Games. Now, in Quarantine, you are building a hospital. It's a tile laying game for two to four players. It also has an action allowance point system built into it in which you're going to be building this hospital, gaining patients, trying to treat them, trying to upgrade and get some better rooms and more rooms for patients while trying to fend off this dreaded Grazel's disease that is out there. Ew. So why don't we take a look at the setup and how to play, and I'll give you my thoughts on the other side. All right, to set up quarantine, uh, we're going to set up here for a three-player game. The first thing you're going to do is each player is going to take a hotel lobby card. No, dude, and that's then they are going to get four of the treating rooms, one of each color. The uh, starting tiles, these are starting treating rooms, you can tell because they have the S on the back. Then each player is allowed to connect the uh, rooms into their hospital however they want. There are placement rules that you have to follow, and we'll go over a few of them, but not all of them. One of the rules that you have to follow is that whenever you place a room, at least one of the doors to that room has to connect to the previous room. So in this example, placing this here would not be legal because none of the uh, doors connect to this particular room. Another placement rule you have to keep in mind is that you have to be able to draw a line back to the lobby through open doors. So in this case, those are open doors all the way to the lobby. Uh, the third placement rule you'll want to keep in mind is you can never build your place in such a way that you would end up blocking the front of your hospital lobby. The next thing you're going to do is you have a bunch of these special room tiles, okay? And you're going to just turn them all face down, mix them up, and then you're going to randomly draw eight of them. If you draw a duplicate, just ignore it, keep it, but ignore it, and continue drawing until you have eight different rooms. Once you have eight different rooms, and let's kind of separate those, you're going to, in a three-player game, set up, set these up in stacks of two. So two supply room, on call, and so on, until you have two of each room. Then you also have additional treatment rooms. There are two of each color, and you're gonna place those uh, also in the center of the board. The remaining tiles, you can just return to the box. They won't be needed for this particular game. Next, you're going to take the patient bag. Now, the patient bag has the patients of all different colors. And you'll also notice there are some green, uh, I'm sorry, some gray ones in there. Those are uh, patients that are infected with Grazel's disease. Oh, no. You're going to place those into the bag, shake them up, and then uh, one at a time, you're going to start drawing these patients and lining them up, up outside your lobby. If you draw a gray cube, and this only 
is for the very first round. All right, if you draw it, you're just going to put it in the center of the table into a common draw pile. We'll tell you what happens when you draw these in subsequent rounds. After each player has drawn four, you'll take these discs and give them to the starting player. Whoever is the starting player, the player that is to the left of that player is going to get the uh, the containment bag or the patient bag, and now you're ready to play. All right, before we get started, a pox upon me uh, or a grazel's upon me. I forgot in the setup that we have these first aid markers that also go to a common draw pile. Shame on me. The object of the game is to have the most points. Points will be tallied at the end of the game. For every two patients that you have cured and are still in your pool, and when you cure patients, you'll put them uh, off to the side here. You may use them for other things, but just know that for every two at the end of the game, uh, you will get one point. Another way you're going to get points is on some of these special tile cards, they have a number on them, which means that you will get one victory point for, say, this particular card at the end of the game if you have that in your hospital. The third way you can get points is by completing a nurse's workstation. So these cards, when you put four of them together, it'll form a, a circle here uh, between the four cards, and a completed circle is a nursing station, and those are worth one point at the end of the game. However, just know that nursing stations are an easy way for grazels to spread more easily through your hospital. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Now on your turn, you must place four patients and you may take up to four actions. Easy to remember, just remember on your turn, you need to do four and four, four patients and four actions. Now, the player to the left of you will have the bag. They will draw four of the uh, patients out of the bag, all right? And they are not allowed to look at them. And you're not allowed to look at them either. When you want a patient, you'll just call out patient and the player will randomly give you one of these patients. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. Now, on the very first turn of the game, since you've already put patients out here, and I've kind of cheated so that we can do an illustration here in just a second, but since you've already placed patients out here, you'll skip the placing of the four patients. Now, the order that you take the four patients or the four actions is completely up to you. You can do them in any order that you want. You can ask for a patient, do a couple of actions, ask for another patient, or you can ask for all the patients first and then do all your actions. You break it up however you want. When you call for a patient, like I said earlier, the uh, person will hand you one uh, at random and now you will either place it into your own line or you can place it into the line of another player. Now, if you've drawn a patient with grazels, you can either place that not into a line, but into either your hospital or an opponent's hospital. <laughs> now, you can place this grazel cube into any open room, including the lobby. But if there is a completed nursing station like there is here, a player could place a grazel cube in one of those um, four rooms and then the grazels will can spread to one of the other rooms it has to be adjacent it cannot be diagonal so you you couldn't take a grazel and place it here by the way when you are spreading uh, grazels to these connected rooms you will get them from the stock if there aren't any in the stock, then you cannot spread them. But since there is one here, you are able to take this and either place it in the yellow room or into the red room. Red room, red room, red room. All right, again, keep in mind, and please don't shout at me, I know this is not a properly connected room. Again, um, if you were to place it here, you couldn't put it adjacent to it here because this tile, this tile here, is not part of this 
a particular nursing station. So in this case, you'd have to place it here or here. Now just know if you had grazels here, it doesn't stop patients from being admitted into your hospital, okay? Um, but if they are in rooms, in these treatment rooms, it will block you from putting the patients into those rooms. So that's how drawing or getting the four patients works. You'll draw. If they are uh, anything but gray, you can put them into your line or another person's line. Or if it's a grazel, you can put it into your hospital, but why, or an opponent's hospital. It's important to note, you can't put more than one in any spot. So if this whole hospital was filled and the other opponent's hospital was filled, then you would have to put that grazel into your hospital. Next, you are allowed to take up to four actions, and that's what's signified by these markers here. Now there are seven actions that you can do, so let's go over each of those quickly. The first action you can do is to admit patients. For one action, you are allowed to admit as many patients as you can into empty rooms. So I could take this blue patient and put him into here. I could take this red one and place him into here, green into this one, but now the blue patient is next. You can't have more than one patient in a room, so this blue patient cannot come in. You're always admitting patients starting from the front of the line and working your way to the back of the line. You cannot place this yellow one because the blue one is in front. However, that was all done with one action. It wasn't three actions to place these three. But let's back them up uh, for just a second here so that we can talk about the next option that you can do, and that is you can move a patient. So again, for one action, you can move one patient in line. So maybe I could move this blue to the end of the line. It's up to me where I move it. I could move it up or back in the line. So that would be one action. Then for my second action, I could now admit these patients and I could now admit all four of them, and the blue one is now waiting outside. Okay, let's say I, uh, yeah, it's a little further in the game, and I've added an extra red room so that I can admit more, admit more patients. Uh, for one action, you can cure patients. Now, you are able to cure all patients of the same color with one action. So for one action, I could cure both of these red patients and just put them off to the side as cured patients uh, that I can use later uh, when opening a contract, which we'll talk about in a second, or for end of game scoring. It's important to note that if a grazel is ever in a room with another patient, you are not allowed to cure that patient until this has been cured, which takes us on to the de decontaminate uh, action that you can take. For one action, you can remove one grazel from your hospital. Also uh, note that if you ever have uh, an action token that you don't want to use, you can exchange it for one of these first aid tokens, and that gives you a bonus action that you can use later in the game. Now, you can have as many of these as you want, but you can only use two of these per turn. Now, for one action, you can legally reposition up to two tiles in your hospital. So, for that one action, I can renovate and say maybe I'll move this one over here. And uh, then I could turn this one. Again, you have to follow all of the placing rules, uh, but that is what you're allowed to do on your renovate turn. Okay, let's talk about the last two actions that you can take, and that is opening a tile contract and buying a room tile. For one action, you are allowed to place a contract on any of these special rooms. They are limited. There will be two of each. When you decide to take out a contract on your room, uh, on a room, you can take the entire stack, place it in front of you, and then with any of the patients that you have cured earlier, you're able to set the price for this room. So maybe I am going to place three patients on here. I have now set the price for the supply room, but I cannot buy this tile yet. Now, player two on his turn can spend one action 
to take the buy a room tile. To buy a room, all they have to do is pay the number of patients that is set on this card. So you never want to set it too low and you never want to set it too high because if player two decided to pay the three, what would happen is player three would then, I'm sorry, player two would then take this card and now can play it into his hospital. Now a player doesn't have to place it into the hospital right away. A player can place it to a room that they have acquired or bought. They can place it off to the side and place it later. And they can do that as a free action. However, you can never have more than one tile off to the side. If you've ever, if you ever acquire a second tile, you must place one, at least one of them. If a player buys out a tile and you were the one that set the contracted price, you're going to get a bonus marker. Now, player three could do the same thing. Player three could, if they had three um, cured patients, could go ahead and buy out this last tile and now place it into uh, his hospital. If that happens, the patients come back to your pool and you would get another tile, but you have lost out. However, if that player three did not buy it, you would take the three that you had acquired and those will go into a discard pile. They will not come back into the bag. They do not go back into the patient bag. You now have this supply room and you can connect it to your hospital wherever you'd like. Now we're not going to go over all of these special tiles, but we'll go over a couple of them so that you kind of get an idea of how they work and what they can do. Play with Okay, so these special room cards have a few symbols on them to take note of. For example, the supply room has a white disc on it next to admit patients, all right? What that means is that this will enhance the admit patients step. So anytime you have just the white disc, it enhances whatever that particular um, action is that you would do on your turn, such as move patients or cure patients. Now, some of them also don't have a disc on them at all, such as the emergency and the cafeteria. That means that that is a free action that you can take on your turn. And finally, you have some that have a white disc with a green arrow on them. What that means is, in, is it is a new action that you can take. So normally you have seven actions you can take during the game, but with the pathology and the gift shop, you now have eight actions to choose from, eight or nine, depending on if you have one of these in your hospital. Now you still only get four actions to take. These are just additional actions. Remember these rooms also give you a bonus one point at the end of the game. Now the cafeteria for example at the start of your turn so on the turn that you buy it you won't get this effect but for every turn thereafter as long as and again this will go for any of these rooms as long as they do not have uh, a grazel disease on it, a gray cube on it, you can use that particular card. If there is a grazel on it, you cannot use it. But the cafeteria at the beginning of your turn will give you one bonus action that you can save or use that particular turn. The pathology allows you to spend one action to clear uh, a two by two area of all gray cubes. So for example, if you had pathology, you could spend an action and target a two by two area to remove all of these gray cubes. If you have triage, you are allowed, again, for one action, instead of moving just one patient, you are allowed to rearrange your entire weight line when you use the triage. And the last one we'll go over is supply room. So when you are admitting patients, you are allowed to add more than one patient to whatever room this is connected to. So let's say you had this connected to a yellow room. The yellow room that it's connected to and all yellow rooms in your hospital can allow a second patient. 
For example, if you had the supply room and you used an action to admit patients, since this room is connected to the yellow room, you are now able to add a second patient to not only that room, but to all yellow rooms that would be in your hospital. Play will continue with players doing their four and four uh, until one of two things happens. Either all of these tiles, the last tile has been purchased, or the last patient has been drawn from the patient bag. When that happens, whoever triggered the end of the game, that will be that person's last turn. All other players will get one more turn, and then we'll move on to the scoring. Again, you're going to get one point for every two cured patients that you have left in your pool. For any of the completed nursing stations, you're going to get a point. And what I forgot to mention earlier is if you have an empty waste line you will also get one point the one who has the most points is the winner of the game okay so that is quarantine now I think this is a pretty good game uh, I like tile laying games and this one really has a good theme to it uh, the uh, components in the game are, are nice uh, you have good wooden components vibrant colors and and good artwork you know, the tiles are uh, nice and thick, should hold up well. And if I had anything negative to say about the components, and it's a minor thing, I wish maybe these tiles would have been a little bit bigger. Um, I think even if you're playing with four players, the game is a small enough footprint that you could have had a little bit larger tiles. Now, it doesn't really need them per se because you're just putting, you know, one, sometimes a grazel and a patient will be in the same room. Uh, but other than that, you're not really filling them up with cubes. I just think maybe some of these tiles could have benefited from being a little bit larger with maybe a, a little explanation of what each of them does. Because there is a lot of variety in the different special rooms, which really adds to the replayability. I like the action point system in the game. The ability to take four actions and for patients and being able to do those in whatever order you wish um, puts some some strategy and thought behind this game now there is some luck especially when you're drawing out those uh, those new patients uh, you know if your opponent draws it seems to draw more gray than you you're constantly having to clear your hospital uh, while maybe the other person's clearing uh, patients. So, you know, with that, it, again, it's, it's a minor issue with the, with the luck, but overall I think the game plays pretty well. And I like uh, some of that take that element to it where you're placing cubes, uh, the, the grazels, into the other hospitals um, and also being able to kind of bid, take out that contract. You can't just outright buy these special room tiles. You have to put that contract on it. And you are thinking, wow, do I, I don't want to bid too low. Everyone's going to buy them. At the same time, I don't want to bid the, you know, too high and feel like I didn't get a good value. But it almost feels like you have to bid a lot because people will just pounce on those special tiles when someone takes a contract out. At least if, if that does happen, you are getting some bonus actions and you are getting your, your patience that you bid, which sounds weird. You're getting those back to use later. Um, but it, I think it's an interesting mechanic and an interesting component in the game. Now, as far as the scoring in the game, this is where I probably have uh, a little issue with it. And that is that it's, everything is like worth one point. The special room tiles are worth one point each. Making sure you don't have anyone wait in your waiting line at the end of the game is one point. And then you get two point or one point for every two patients you have. I don't think the scoring is quite balanced. Um, I think some of the uh, tiles, some of the special room tiles, are a little more powerful than others. And so maybe the less powerful one should have been worth two victory points at the end of the game and others won. I'll let you kind of sort out which ones you think are maybe a little more OP than, than others, but um, the fact that also clearing that waiting line 
uh, is only one point. I mean, that can be difficult to do. And again, maybe that should have been worth two points or three points. Something different. Now, the rules state that the patients that you have saved, the ones you're saving off to the side, all of that has to be out in the open. You can't have anything hidden. And I'm not sure I'm a big fan of that because what I see is that you can always see, you can check every other player and see, okay, how many special room tiles they have, how many patients they have in their waiting line, are they close to getting the point for that, how many nursing stations they have. So you can compute somebody's score at all times and see if you're ahead or behind. There's just no surprise when it comes to the end of the game. And because there really isn't much of a surprise to when the game ends, what you can end up seeing is a lot of people taking time to sit there and map out, compute everybody's score out there, and it can slow down the game, and it kind of takes away from any kind of a surprise at the end. So for our house rule, you're allowed to hide the patients if you want to, or you can leave them out in the open. But um, just know for me that I, I, I'd like a little bit of a surprise uh, at the end as far as the scoring, especially when it would help when you're taking out a contract on something because it adds to more of that, man, I'm not quite sure how much I should bid because I don't know how much everybody has if I haven't been paying attention. But aside from that, the game is easy to teach and it's, uh, you know, it takes about an hour to play. So it's not a, a, a lengthy game. Um, I, the, the rules, I think, are, are fairly well written. There are some things that need to be clarified. And on Board Game Geek, the uh, designer has a FAQ out there. It's 10 pages, which is pretty long for an FAQ. But you know what? There, there isn't a lot of ambiguity in the rules. But there are some situations that may come up that would require maybe uh, a little bit of clarification. So it, it might be good to have that. Uh, off to the side just in case. Overall, I do like playing this game. Uh, so for me, I give this game a 7. Now if you've enjoyed this review, please hit the like button below, subscribe to our channel, and check out our other great videos. And once again, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for visiting the Arch Gaming Network. For more great content, check us out at archgamingnetwork.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook.